hi guys hi guys good evening um i'm making this video at night it's some few minutes to nine and i felt like i should make this video because i've realized um most of the nurses especially the new the new graduates those people who just completed their um, their colleges they have no I wouldn't want to say that they don't know. It's because uh, maybe, you know, we normally say lack of information is the one that um, leads us to like maybe do things that we may not have done. So I just I just felt like it's important for me to talk about um, this, um, this topic because many people are asking, okay, well, I'm a nurse. But even if I go to America, like you're telling us, we need to immigrate. Oh, you're saying you made a mistake and you don't want us to repeat the same mistake. Um, like, how how sure are you that when we go to America, we're not going to regret? Because many people are saying, when we go to America, life is very expensive. Come on, guys. Yes, life is expensive in America. But like I've been telling people, like I've had, because I've never been to America. I've never been to America myself. I've just been hearing people talk of America, but I have friends who are there. I have colleagues who've been working with them. They knew these things, but they didn't tell us. So then they, they've left. Like them, they, they are not in the country anymore. They're making good money. They're making money. They're making dollars. They're saying life is expensive, yes. But if you were to compare life in Kenya and life in America, it's totally different. Your life is moving. Just like in another video I said, assuming you compare ZP in Facility A in Kenya and you compare Mary in Facility A in America, they all took a loan with the bank. Assuming it's 5.5 or 5 million, whatever amount of money that they are getting, they got to develop themselves. Because at, at the end of the day, let, let you not be lied to, but you're able to survive with your, with your payslip. That would be a lie. You have to, especially maybe like, oh, well, I don't know about other professions, but most of the times you find that for us, for us nurses, let me fix this here. For us nurses, you find that... Um, you find that you have to survive. You can't survive without getting a facility with a bank. You understand? So we said in the other video, if you were to compare two people who went to America at the same time with a person who was left in Kenya five years ago and both of them took loans, the same amount of money, one of them is making it in life. Or, or if not made it in life already, they are almost making it in life. That is the person who is in America. So I just thought, let's talk about, let's talk about, um, let's talk about, uh, let's compare the life, the life in America of a nurse and the life, the life of a Kenyan nurse and the life of an, an American nurse. So what do you need, you as a nurse, what do you need for you to move out of Kenya? First of all, like we had said in the first initial video, you must be a CHN, that is a Kenya Registered Community Health Nurse, or you must have at least have a basic in nursing, not the degree, not the not the certificate that I was talking about, but at least have a basic in in nursing. Basic, we could either be talking about uh, a diploma in nursing that is CHN, or a degree in nursing that is BSN. You understand? So from there, identify an agency. Because there's so many agencies, over 15 agencies that are taking nurses to America in the country. That is as far as my research is concerned. Because I told you guys I'll be researching, I'll be doing researches, and then I'll come back with more videos and explanations of what you need to do. What you need to do for you not to repeat the mistakes that we did, as who didn't know and didn't get this information earlier. So I'm saying there's so many, there's so many, there's so many agencies that are taking nurses. And uh, so you can identify one of them and say, okay, well, let me do MedPro, for example. Let me do Avant, for example. I'll just give you, I'm just giving you an example. Or rather, you can decide to do it on your own. 
So in short, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that if you want to start the nursing journey, the American journey as a nurse, you have several options you can use until you get there. One, you could be self-sponsored. You can sponsor yourself. You sponsor, when you say sponsoring yourself, it means you're trying to like, you're doing the process by yourself. You're not relying on anybody to do the process for you. Or you can use an agency, which means the agency does like almost basically everything for you, filing your petition, like, you know, um, guiding you through the NCLEX exams and all that. I'll talk about NCLEX exam. All those things, you know, the, 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 the agency will guide you through and it will take you through the whole process, which is, I think, according to the people who've used agencies, because I've talked to both, ever since I told you I'm going to compile a video, I've talked to both who've done their self-sponsorship, like self-sponsored, and I've also talked to people who, who, um, who are doing the process or who are in the process with the, with the agency. So now, you here as ZP, you've identified that because I don't have money in the country, like money is not enough for me, for me to sponsor myself, I would rather look for an agency. And what is this agency that I'm talking about? An agency is somebody who will come in between you and your employer in America. They know people in America, they know hospitals in America, and they have been granted the permission to employ people out of out of America, that is foreign employers, foreign employees. So here comes an agency. I give you an example, an example of MedPro. MedPro is an agency that has been in existence for quite some time. Okay. So what they'll do, you'll sign a contract with them. They will tell you this is what you need to do. We'll guide you through your uh, nursing process, your nursing, uh, like the whole journey, the American journey. We will give you materials for doing, for learning for NCLEX. We'll assist you in doing your IELTS. And then after that, we will file your petition. We'll file your I-140. We'll, we'll help you fill the DS-260. We'll help you relocate with your family to America. Then, of course, we've, get, we've gotten you an employer who is the hospital now in America. You, you didn't know that hospital. It made for who knew the hospital. But at the end of the day, you'll do an interview with the hospital. You sign a contract with them. But it's not the hospital that will be paying you directly. It will be the agency. Now, in this case, we're talking about MedPro. All Avant, all Interstaff, Adavi. There are so many. I'll talk about them. Okay? So, after you've landed in America, which is not an easy journey, as per those people who've done it, they're they are, they are saying it's, it's, not an, it's not an easy journey. Like, you have, to, you have to have patience. If you know what is patience, you have to have patience. You know, you have to have patience. So, um, what will happen is after you land in America, you will go through the orientation. They'll take you through the orientation. You need to understand the, the, the culture in the country, in the States. They'll help you transition. They'll help you get a car. They'll help you get a school for your family. They'll help you, but on condition that you'll have to work with them for a certain period of time. Remember, all these things, you're not, they're not doing for you for, for free, and you've not paid them. They facilitated for you for the last, like, maybe you've been with them for the last, like, five years or something. The journey, they've been working with you through that journey of um, immigrating to America as a nurse to go work there. But you've not paid them even a single dime. But so what happens when you get there is that they will they will bond you. That's something that we call a contract. You will you will have signed a contract with them in such a way that now when you land there, you will uh, you will have to work under them for a certain period of time, a maximum of three years, as they are paying you a certain amount of money. You know, as they are paying you a certain amount of money, then when you're done with the contract, you just now you can work. Uh, like in, you can now have a direct hire. <coughs> direct hire means now the hospital is the one. There is no middleman between you. There is no middleman between you and your employer. Your employer is no longer the agency that took you from Kenya with your family or facilitated your transition from Kenya or from Africa with your family. They are no longer your. They are no longer your. They are no longer your employer. So you have a different employer who is now paying you directly. That means. 
after like three, three years or something, because you finished the contract with them, you're now free to work anywhere. You can also become a travel nurse. Like so many things those guys who are abroad, they're explaining. You know, now we come back to the self-sponsored. Self-sponsored means it is in two ways. You can decide, I will start my journey alone because I want to reduce the cost that the agency will cater for me in such a way that I'll have reduced the contract or the amount of time that these people will bond me. We are together up to that point. So what you'll do, you will start the process by yourself, which is hectic because you'll have to open an account with CGFNS, send your documents for verification, like for them to understand, they have to verify your documents from the Nursing Council of Kenya to the Nursing Council in America so that they know for real you're trained as a nurse in Kenya, you're practicing, you have a valid license, and now you're planning to immigrate. So it has to be legal. So there's something we call document verification. So you open, a docu you open an account with CGFNS, they verify your documents, which takes a process, it's a process. Then you get something we call CES evaluation, like the credential evaluation. They evaluate your exam, they, they evaluate your documents to see whether you're eligible to sit for a nursing exam. This nursing exam is done, is a nursing, is the nursing, how do I call it? Because it's called NCLEX. Now we're talking about NCLEX. NCLEX is an exam that is done by all nurses in the United States. It's just like the way we're in Kenya. For you to be licensed, there is an exam that you have to do that is governed or, or um, it's governed by the nursing board of Kenya. So now there is this NCBSN, the nursing states, the nursing board of the nursing states in the America. Like in the states, you know, in the states there are so many states. Like in America, there are so many states. So all those states, there is one board that governs how nurses behave, code of ethics of nurses in America and all that. So that board is the one that regulates one exam that is called NCLEX. So for you to practice as a nurse in America, you must have sat for that exam that is now the one we are talking about, NCLEX. Now before you do that, before you get to do that, that exam, you must have revised because it's a very different exam. It's not like the way we do it in, uh, back home. It's not like the nursing council in, 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 in Kenya or something. Maybe like Africa, the, the exams we do in Africa. So at the end of the day, you'll have to be, you'll have to be examined. And for you to sit for that exam, the one that we're talking about here now, it's the NCLEX. You'll have to open an account with the CGFNS, like I've said. After you open the account with the CGFNS, you sit, the, you, you prepare, you get the materials. So which means now you'll source it, you'll source the materials by yourself. Because you're not under anybody, so it's you, it's upon you, it's your initiative to get the materials to revise for the NCLEX. So after you're done with the NCLEX, we'll talk about preparation for NCLEX in another video. After now you're done with the NCLEX, you now go look for an agency to sponsor you, to get for you a job, to process your I-140 petition. The I-140 petition, it's, um, they will even go through the NVC, you know, like the NVC, they will assist you go through the process of the, they take your documents to NVC or something, you know. Then they will help you to petition your visa, the labor expedition, the, the labor certification, they'll assist you in that because they have a group of lawyers. They'll assist you in filing the DS-260, you know. Those are all those, the, the labor plus process that you have to go through. Now, remember, in this case, you had started the journey alone. Then at some point, you joined an agency. So it is partially self-sponsored and it's partially sponsored. You understand? So the expenses that uh, the agency has incurred because of you, it's a bit less. And like this somebody who started all the way from the beginning with the agency. So which means their bond will be a bit longer because, you know, they need to serve the agency for them to pay back the money that the agency have used. So that means when you land in America, if ZP has been sponsored, Mary has not been sponsored, and there's this one who's been sponsored partially. The one who's not been sponsored have a leeway of working out things because they are, they are not bonded by any agency. The one who was Half, half sponsored, will have some kidogo, like some few months of bonding, and then they just exit the bond, or they pay off the, the, the contract. And like now this zip here, who was fully sponsored, 
You understand? So now, we've talked about the sponsored fully, half sponsored, and now this person who is doing basically everything by yourself, which is a bit difficult. Then you can, you can rest assured it's a bit difficult. It's not an easy thing because I've really talked to people. They've told me I've talked to somebody who has done it by themselves. They're actually in America right now. I think they're in Michigan or something. That's what she told me. And they have talked to people who've been bonded by 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 agencies from point A to point like from from the point they started the journey until the end, and it was not easy as well because you have to revise for the exams and all that. Okay. Now, after you've done that, we are trying to talk about the journey on how you can go to America. We've already talked like you've identified which way do I want to use. Will I go the self-sponsored way? Will I go half-sponsored, or I'll go fully sponsored, fully self-sponsored. Those are three ways. So you've, I, if you, according to what you decide now, you look for an agency. Agencies are very many. Actually, there are over 10. But the ones that I managed to get to gather is one we call Interstaff, there's Adevia, there's Medpro, like I've mentioned, there's uh, Avant, there's Passport USA. There are so many, guys, there are so many agencies. Just Google them, try out this. If it does not, as long as you you hold a diploma in nursing, that is a basic requirement for you to to start your journey. As long as you have basic, um, you have a diploma in nursing that is KRSHN, or you have a degree in nursing, and you must have worked at least for one year in a hospital setup. And sana sana they prefer a hospital that has a capacity, a bed capacity of above 180 beds. All these agencies, if you Google them and learn more about them, all of them should be at least above the qualification for you to qualify to be like to be taken by the agency or something like for them to sponsor you. You must be working in a clinical area for at least one year, at least one year. And then that clinical area that you're working in, it's not maternity. It's either medical surgical, ICU, either medical surgical ward, either you're working in a cath lab. Either you're working in a, in a pediatric ward, psychiatric ward, such kind of places. You understand? So now this comes back to the point that we were talking about in the previous video. That when your child is going to do nursing, come on to talk on endocrine nursing. Be very careful because you need to understand what kind of nursing are they going to do. Is it the umbrella that we, the, that we said, the KRCHN, or they are going to be lied to by the school, border to a fine nursing. You understand? Because if they do KRM, that is Kenya Registered Midwife, they do not qualify anywhere to go to America. You understand? Because when you come to the agency and you tell them, I've been a midwife for the last five years, and I've been working in a level six, level five hospital with 180 beds of maternity, they will not take you because they don't like people who work in maternity. You get? It is a disqualification. So... It cuts across all, like, you know, you have to understand what are we doing, you know? So if you, you're telling your child to do nursing with an intention of going to America at some point, just be very careful and understand which type of nursing are they doing. Guide them through. Guys, we've already talked about the agencies that, um, that are taking people to, to the U.S. Then somebody else will ask you, okay, Zip, you're telling us, because you've already explained that when somebody goes to America or they're making money, how much money are they making? So let's take an average of a Kenyan nurse who is earning around 70000 That's an average. 70000 as a gross salary. And there's some people who are earning more than that or there's some people who are earning less than that. You can rest assured. You can rest assured. You can, you can take this to the bank, my friend. There is somebody who is earning less than seventy, and they're working in Nairobi and they're the breadwinners. So these are the kind of people who I was telling you, they have to work an extra an extra job. You have to come from point uh, hospital A to hospital Z. And then here they are telling you that when you go to America, you'll have three jobs. It is the same thing that nurses are doing in the country. The only difference, like I said in another video, the only difference is the pay. But people are equally doing the same in the country. The low comes that I was talking about. So let's take a nurse in Kenya. Because somebody is telling you, you when you go to America, how much they're telling you money is good, the expenses are high. Okay, let's come, let's come and break down. A nurse is working in Kenya, getting an average of seventy thousand. 
right? And there's somebody else who is working in America who is getting at least per month, at least per month, per month, 7,000. Per month, 7,000 USD. Okay? If you were to convert 7,000 USD, it will come to about maybe, give it, I don't know, around a, a rough estimate of maybe 960. Let's give it a 960,000, right? If you do 960,000, even if you were to remove all the expenses, you remove the rent car of 1,500 US dollars, do the utilities, because taxes, yes, there are many in the US. So you will have, you will have the bills, the bills that you'll be slapping you every month. You'll find that you tell, you're told, if you're living in an expensive state, you'll be told maybe the, the, the rent is 1,500 US dollars. You'll get somebody who is telling you you're paying utility fee of 200 USD dollars. Food, maybe you, you have a big family, so it's around 400. Maybe you're getting gas, gas for the car, like ill fuel per month. You find that you've used 200 because you need a car in America. But the people who are talking out there on YouTube, um, our friends who've left, telling us a car in America is a necessity. You will not tell me it's a luxurious thing in America. Just like the way Wazungus normally tell you, time is money. In America, time is money. Every single, every single minute you waste, you're wasting a dollar. So you need a car to transition you from what point A to point B. So you will need fuel. Fuel is something that you need at the end of the month, every month. So give it 200 USD per month, okay? We're still calculating, right? Then you have taxes. Taxes are quite a lot in America because there's something, according to the Google and stuff, there's something we call federal state, there's payroll state, there's, um, there's, federal, there's, there's federal taxes, there's state taxes. The state, like the state in America, it's like a country. It's like we're talking about Africa. Africa has Kenya, Uganda, America. So a state in America is like maybe Kenya out of Africa. You understand? So maybe there are taxes that Kenya pay that Tanzania don't pay. Those are the ones that we are calling state taxes. So you will find that in some states, there are states that do not tax you. And there are some other states that tax you expensively. It, it varies. Depending on like depending on um, depending on the things maybe like the, the the kind of life the lifestyle and everything the, the the cost of living in that state okay maybe like well, Washington DC or something I don't know those people who are already there they can even they can comment guys comment down below and tell us more if you're in America and you're watching this please enlighten us more who are here so that at least we learn and understand before we come to America what kind of a fix are we putting ourselves into so we're still counting the taxes of somebody who is in America. But as somebody who is one working in Kenya and getting an average of 70,000 Kenyan shillings. And this other person is making 7,000 7, US dollars. So if you were to, comp to maybe even multiply, multiply with a, with a hundred on the lower side, give it a hundred, a hundred bob Kenyan shillings. So that is 700,000 per month. So we have a 700,000 shillings per month, the Kenyan nurse who is in America, and we have the 70,000 shillings for the nurse who is working in Kenya, right? So we are trying to compare the two and see who will be left with something at the end of the month. Because we, ha we were at the payroll tax, we say there is payroll tax, we say there is federal, federal sasa ni ile yote, like you see the way we talk about Africa, sasa ya America, ile ya government ya America now. But guys, this is the information that I've gotten after talking to my friends and after Googling, after researching, I'm quite a good enough of research, you know? I've never been in America, so I don't know. So we are just trying to educate ourselves. We want us to compare life and see, is it the right way? If we decide, if Zippy decides today, oh, I will not be talking to people about migrating and I'm not migrating as well. If I decide that, like today, I want to go to America as well and feel how people are feeling when they've left, those who've left, would I have made the right decision, you know? If I was to choose to remain in Kenya and continue looking for my vitamin M's from here to there, would I have made the right decision? So we are educating each other, guys. And that's what I'm saying. If you're in America and you're watching this, please comment down below. You may educate us. Okay? So we are saying there are taxes. Already we've been deducted. The taxes and there is car insurance. There is medical insurance. There is entertainment. Of course, you will need to have a life. Okay? Even in Kenya, people have life. So give yourself some dollars. So in total, after you calculate all the expenses that you've had in that month, you who is in America, who is earning 7,000 USD per month, you realize that you've used around 5,000 5, USD. 
it is your monthly expenses yani umetumia 500000 kenyan shilling kidogo kwa sababu tumesema tu multiply na 100 tusijipe hopes tuanze kusema ti oh dollar sahi imefika 137 because I, currently i think dollar is at 137 so don't give yourself high hopes of saying oh 137 let's multiply it with 100 and see you've been earning or you're earning 700000 kenyan shillings and your monthly expenses have come to 500000 shillings Isa hizo ni domob sana umetumia si ndio but at the end of the month how much money have you been left with you have 200000 mse even if you had a sacco back home you had a sacco you had a sacco because by the time you left Kenya you had already maybe you had already aligned your life you had a sacco a cooperative sacco that you were saving your shares just be depositing 100 100000 Kenyan shillings per month 50 give it to your mom okay because 100000 you divide You're, you're putting it in your shares like you're saving it 100,000 per month in the sense that after some time you'll come back home and develop something because you want to invest back home right so you have that idea let me be depositing the 200,000 that I've been left with per month after even I have done the deductions of the entertainment and everything I gave entertainment around 500 so at the end of the day you you you've done you've done you've done your calculations and you're like because i've already entertained myself i've paid bills i've paid gas for the whole month like i'm settled i'm sorted out so what else do i need the only money that i have left cash at hand the one that i have at the end of the month is 200 if you were to compare it, to to convert it to kenyan money it is about uh it's about um it's about uh 200,000 so this 200,000 What can I do with it? Just deposit 100,000 in the shares. Make them your shares because at the end of the year they'll give you some dividends. So if you decide that you'll be coming yearly to come and do your development, it is still doable. You understand? It is still doable because you will have saved 100,000 per month, then you're left with 100. This 100 give your mom 20, give your dad 20. And then the rest you can do whatever it is that you want. You know, 20 20 that is 40. We are talking about Kenyan shillings. Kenyan shillings. So you've already used 140. You have 60 that is remaining. Now we come back to the Kenyan nurse who is earning 70,000 per month. Expenses are not many as we thought. Because they are not many, this person is the breadwinner and is paying maybe they are living in Umoja and they are paying a two bedroom house of maybe 15,000, right? And remember the 70,000 is the gross, an average gross. So you've not been deducted. So maybe take home is around 50. We give 20 the Kenyan government, the taxes, the NSSF, the NHIF, blah 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 and stuff. So the 70 is not the net. So let's assume this person is getting 20 as 50 as take home, right? And you've paid 15,000 as your rent. What were we saying guys before we got distracted? A call came in. So I was saying a person who is working in Kenya earning 70,000 and they take home because that was the gross there are no deductions when we see 70 average of 70 so they are earning 70 and then maybe deductions they get 50 so take home is 50 they are living in umoja because of course with 70,000 my friend you cannot afford to live in gigiri you cannot afford to live in kilimani kilelishwa for who mimosa Hmm? at Iruaka. and you're the breadwinner you're a nurse that's a lie if you want to live there my friend you'll have to wake up every day go to work your your main employer then you talk hapo you go to another place you go to another place like you'll be sleeping in taxis and matatus and stuff we've been there and we're still there anyway like i told you we're still here up and complaining here but there's nothing that we've done about it all that time but it's because we didn't know if we knew And that's why we're trying to enlighten you guys those who are just graduating from school please don't waste your time don't waste your time especially when you ha- when you're still young sisi tumesha chapa mileage like we've already gotten old you know okay well not old but we are not as young as 25 because by the time you're completing school you normally like you're completing college you're normally at 25 If you were to work for like three years and then you decide to go, maybe you go to America at 29, you know, that is a good age because you still have the stamina and everything. You'll even grow, you'll, you'll grow professionally and all that. Okay? 
So we go back to our main main topic. This person is earning 50, getting uh, living in a house of 15, uh, maybe shopping, monthly shopping. 5,000 squeeze at a city too. 5,000 Kenyan shillings. It knows something. So out of 50, minus 15,000, right? So you're left with how much? 35. Fanya shopping at 10,000. Oh, jali pata school fees, Mufi. Ume save nini? What have you saved? You know? You'll end up selling things like the way we've been selling, even poreros and everything. You'll try to make ends meet, but still nothing is coming out. You'll be left complaining, complaining like every day you're complaining. Every day you're complaining. You wake up every day complaining. Don't be a complainer. You know, wake up and, and, and uh, I said we need to change the narrative. Long time ago, people used to say nurses can't afford this. And it's true, man, it's true. Because it was a call, it's a calling, so you don't want to complain. But at the end of the day, you have a living. You have, you have people who are depending on you. You are like a pillar, you know, you're supporting so many people at the end of the day. So however much it's a calling, you also need to be appreciated. You don't need that somebody to tell you, oh, give, let me give you 100,000 because you've done a nice procedure. No, 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 no. But at least if you do, like maybe if you go to work and get paid, you'll not even have those anger issues that people develop anger issues. When you go to work, you start talking to people, they're just annoyed at you. You know, they're just projecting their anger to people. But at the end of the day, it's not them who had kosayad them. Ni maishida zimemugonga huko inji mbaka na leta, you know. So wake up, wake up, wake up, guys. Think of what to do next. Think of your life. You know, think of your life when you're still young. I hope this video is, is educating you in a way that you who is just a graduate, you who is waiting to graduate from, you know, like maybe you're watching this and you're in KMTC, you're just about to graduate. It will help you. It will come in handy because you'll know after I'm um, from this, this is where I need to go, you know. So guys, um, please don't be lied to because we've realized this person who went to America, okay? This, this person who went to America and this person who remained in Kenya, there's still a difference. How much there's a difference? There's a difference in terms of lifestyle. There's also a difference in terms of exposure. What do I mean? Compare yourself with somebody who is working, yani just have these two scenarios. If somebody who is working in Salama dispensary, that is where I was born, where I was immunized, the, the immunization, zangu, penye zakipi, uko shagundani, kwenye nini litoka. Like where I'm from, from the deep interior village, there's a nurse who is working there. And then there's another one who is working in Nairobi, zipi now. Life in the village is very cheap. Life in Nairobi is very expensive. Yet we are in Kenya, both of us. Everybody is complaining but in their own aspects of life. Somebody who is in the village is complaining of a different thing, but who is in Nairobi is also complaining of a different thing. But the fact remains, life in Nairobi is expensive, but life in the village is cheap. Me, I'll buy literally everything in Nairobi. The only thing that I won't buy is air. And the air that I'm breathing in and out is polluted because I'm in the city. But that person who is in the village, rural areas, who kondani pale, fresh air, fresh things, but life is cheap, literally cheap, but they're still complaining. It's the same thing we are saying. Compare Kenya and America. Kenya is like a village, you know. Let's assume it's not a village as per se, because it's a developing country, you cannot compare it with a developed country. That is why you find that in America, life is a bit expensive. Just like the way we've compared Nairobi and Ushago. Nairobi and somebody who is in the village. Both of you are nurses, but someone is complaining of a life in a different angle, at a different angle. The exposure that comes with you being in the village and you being in town, in the urban area. Two different people. The exposure is different with the person who is in Kenya and the person who is in America. Those are two different people. It's the same, it's the same way we are saying. It's just like saying, when you, when, you buy, when you don't have a car, 
like literally you don't have a car maybe you're riding a bike you ride a bike from morning in the morning to work you know you find like your life is just okay but you just wish you had a car but remember there's somebody who doesn't even have legs they are wishing they had a at least even if it were it, it was one leg you you have two legs and you have bicycle or even if it's a motorbike tricycle or whatever it is but you're wishing to have a car then you end you get to a point you buy a car now you you're wishing you had a ferrari ferrari or whatever it is you're wishing you had an aeroplane or something you just compare yourself with somebody who is in the village no 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 not in the village as we were saying if you have a I mean at every point in life you always wish to get the next to the next level so you've already you, like re, right now maybe you've just completed your your college and you're wondering what next you're so eager you want to go and work but just know that life out there is not easy it's not as easy as maybe people are telling you and it's the high time we as nurses just realize like i personally realized there is so many there is so much information that is needed out there there is so much information that is needed both by the public because that public they are the ones who educate us that public yeye ndo mzazi wako that is your parent the public is your parent so they need also to understand that when your child when you when you prospecting that your child uh, you want your child to be a nurse what does it take what does it entail and then after you you become a nurse what 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 are your expectations do you just stop there you know when you just become a diploma nurse diploma holder nurse do you just stop there what do you do next and that's why i decided let me just be working with you with you as as we continue we grow we grow together i've grown alone and i've learned the hard way i want to make it easier for you guys any information that i gather out there i come and give it to you I may be a local YouTuber, I may be a local um let me call it educator or something, not educator as per se, but somebody who is voicing out something, a vessel that you know, somebody somebody that's just voicing out something that they know. I may be local, but at least maybe I'll help I'll have helped somebody. I'll have, have I'll have helped. Oh my god. I'll have the one message idea mtu. You understand? So Let somebody not lie to you that when you go to America life would be very expensive you know you not be able to manage that life blah 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 that's crap don't be like us and i've repeated that so many times don't be like us don't be left out there is a mass wave that's living be among them be among them those who are living please be among them and you will come back later to say thank you there are so many places you can go It's not only America. Yesterday we talked about um we talked about uh Canada. We talked about Canada here you guys, you can check it out. There's a website that I talked about yesterday for looking for jobs and how you can even get jobs in America without in Canada, sorry. So if you just graduated and maybe you're not even a nurse, you can check out that video. Today we've talked about nurses. And also Canada they are employing nurses. I mean there's so many countries. It doesn't have to be America only. There's America, there's Canada. there is um australia there is uk you know actually i think um was it yesterday or today the government of uk have just said that you know getting a visa to the uk right now it's very easy. about 15 days you have a visa just apply for one as long as guys let let you know be lied to as well you know when you hear people telling you that you can now get a visa people think people tend to think that maybe oh I can just go to the embassy apply for a visa and then I go where are you going what type of visa are you applying for you need to have a proof of where you're going if it's a visit you need to have a proof of somewhere you're going there's a hotel reservation or whatever it is you're going somewhere you're not just a criminal just like the way we talked it about Canada you have to prove to the government of UK or you Australia or wherever you're going that you can you are you are just somebody who is normal okay so guys let's stop this video here so that at least we talk about um in the next video we shall be talking about nclex exam what is nclex so after i've identified um now because i've identified what way i want to 
use to go to America? What does it take? What is NCLEX? You know? And then after I do NCLEX, what happens? What is expected of me after the NCLEX? You know? Let's enlighten each other. I'll be getting somebody who has done these things so that at least they enlighten us. We may get one, two, three things from there. And you never know, we may have helped somebody. Okay? So bye-bye, guys. It's already at night here, so good night. Those who are sleeping, good morning. Have a good day. Have a blessed day. Ciao. See you till next time.